Rattlesnakes are some of the most iconic reptiles in the world, famous for their potent venoms and exaggerated defensive displays. And right here in the southeastern US dwells the largest rattlesnake species on planet Earth, the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. In today's adventure, we're joining herpetologist Ella Gedwar on a quest to decode the secrets hidden within the venom of this legendary snake, if we can find one. Uh, it's actually really difficult to find a diamondback, even when you can be staring right at it. They're just so cryptic, so it's almost impossible to find one if you're just like kind of hiking about. You have to be really like digging through the foliage and looking for that specific diamondback pattern. Boo, there's a cockroach. <laughs> That's it. Oh my god, Gosh. Like one, two, three. I think they're... Are these greenhouse frogs? I think they're greenhouse frogs. You might be right. Yeah, there's look at all of them. So it's many. ridiculous. Oh I know. <gasps> Who's that? Baby oh, racer? Wow, it's tiny baby. We finally you have to flip something. A snake is a snake. It's not a diamondback, it's a snake. No, he's gonna bite me. What is a cutie? What's your favorite thing about racers? Oh, um they poop less than other snakes, I guess. <laughs> but is, I, it, I, is that a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> um my favorite thing about racers, I think I really like their color change as they grow older. Like the babies have super cool patterning. Um, but I guess this one just lost it. We typically find them on edge habitats, maybe somewhere like this. It transitions from a really thick bush of saw palmettos to an open area, and they'll be chilling right here underneath some leaves. Cockroach. Ah! What was that? I don't know. Oh, Pinewood's litter snake. Oh my god. No way. That is an awesome, that is a cool snake. No way! <laughs> That's, have you seen one before? No, hell Oh, no smelly. way. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this is a really unique fossil grill species. I've only actually seen one time in my life before, but this individual, I think, is way larger and way prettier than the previous individual. Now, as highly fossil grill snakes, they spend most of their lives underground, but then also in rotten wood. So, like, this rotting plywood is a perfect place for these to live. And they're almost exclusively invertebrate predators. And they look super cute, but they're hiding a little secret, which is they're actually rear fang venomous. So they don't produce very much venom. It's a very mild neurotoxin that they produce in their devouring gland. And they have these teeny little rear fangs that are grooved, so they'll kind of chew on their prey and inject them with just a little bit of venom. And so I think that these are kind of like the upland ringneck snakes here in Florida, because that venom does allow them to take on a little bit larger prey than all the other fossorials. That is awesome. Another non-diamondback, but we're getting, well, are we getting warmer? I don't know. It's just cool. <laughs> it's <a unique> species. <laughs> wow, like I love how they try and dig in your hand. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you later. Nope. Oh, let's go this way. There you go. While we were not successful in tracking down a wild individual to process, Ella has a surprise for me. She's brought a wild caught snake into the field and will allow me to assist with her data collection process, know, so both so bad. I can get some experience Good working girl. with wild diamondbacks and so I can learn about her venom research. There we go. No, you're supposed to go inside. There we go. <gasps> Come on. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Sweet. First, we're going to measure her, um, and then we'll get some blood and then that hopefully should make her angry enough to bite and give us some venom. Okay, so her snout vent length is 122. I'm gonna get some blood from her caudal vein, which okay. is just right in the middle of her tail. And it's a little bit harder on beefier animals like this yeah. to get to that vein. But we'll see how well we can do here. So what I'm gonna have you do is get her close to the ground. Okay. And then you're gonna slowly inch her head out yeah. just until her neck is out. Okay. Um, so she can move her neck, but she can't really move anywhere else or like cool. bite or anything. So, oh, she can't fit anymore? Mm. <laughs> we can get well, her in a bigger tube. Yeah, she can. Okay. They always can, right? Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> Here she comes. I've had that problem where they're too fat to fit all the <laughs> yeah. way through and we have to get a different I tube. I think that with snakes and they can still fit. I'm like, okay. If they want to, they're like a cat, you yeah. know? They can turn into liquid. <laughs> yeah. There right. we go. All right, so I'm gonna try and grab her neck without her pulling back. Yeah. There we go. So she's completely in my control. She can't really get anywhere. I'm gonna yeah. try and get her to oh, bite. She, she does not want to bite right now. Oh, yeah. Her fangs aren't even out. Oh, wow. So 
that's just typical of Diamondbacks. Yeah. Um, so, so, like, even when we're literally instigating a bite, this yeah. thing is still reluctant to bite. So, when people get bit, it's a little bit surprising. I'm squeezing her glands. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, my gosh. Plenty of venom. That's astounding. It's super yellow due yeah. to a, um, a protein called L-amino acid oxidase. Oh, okay. So juveniles don't have this. And L-A-A-O is just kind of helps it move around the bloodstream faster okay. and it's prey. So yeah. babies obviously don't need it because they're not eating super big stuff. We're seeing on the island system that I was telling you about earlier out on yeah. Anklo, Caladesi, and Honeymoon um, that as the animals are going older, they produce myotoxin. Okay. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. So oh. that helps with the paralyzation of hind limbs. Oh. So they're going from eating something that like maybe can't run as fast right. or can't get that far away to something maybe like a rabbit yeah. that you need to paralyze those hind limbs so they can't get away. Yeah. I'll go back and I will dry this in something called a lyophilizer, which is kind of like when you dehydrate your food. Yeah. It dries down into like a powder. Okay. And then we'll resubstitute that in water. Yeah. And put it into a machine called the HPLC. So we'll do reverse phased high performance liquid chromatography on that it. That sounds exciting. A lot of words, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but basically all it does is it separates every little protein that's in here and it goes through at a different speed. Um, and then kind of what comes out is like this chart that looks like, like a heart rate chart. Okay, yeah. Um, so every time there's a peak, that means that a new protein is coming uh, through. We have to investigate a little bit more the Southern population of diamondbacks and it's very catered to what they eat. So okay. the Northern diamondbacks I was saying are different population it cuts off around the Suwannee River okay yeah um, they're probably eating something different than the southern rattlesnakes are huh. so their well. venom is is pretty different from each other and that's why anti-venom production needs to be oh. better because if you're only using snakes from the north you're not making an anti-venom that's catered for snakes in the right. south so right. we, we are incorporating them now yeah. but before it wasn't yeah so it was less effective down huh. in the south Interesting. yeah so there is just no ecological equivalent for an eastern diamondback rattlesnake here in the southeastern United States. I mean, these are the largest rattlesnakes in the world. So a lot of people, if they see a diamondback rattlesnake on the road or even just like out in the wild, they might harass it or kill it because they think that this is a dangerous creature. But this is an animal just like any other. It has a critically important role here in our ecosystems. So I think it's kind of a failure on our part if we don't take measures to conserve these snakes and learn as much as we can about them because there is nowhere else in the world that has these beautiful and charismatic reptiles. It's hard to help diamondbacks directly, but in order to protect every species in Florida is just protecting their habitat. They don't do great when we build on their habitat. They like to live in these high and dry areas, but they're running out. This is where we like to build. They don't like the swamps that we keep as preserves, you know? So just protecting Florida habitat is really the best way to protect the rattlesnakes. As soon as Ella's dissertation is published, I'm gonna put a link in the description. But until then, you can learn more about her work by following her on social media. Also, sorry the content has been a little bit slow this summer, but I promise it's for a good reason. If you saw my community post, you already know, I actually just got back from an amazing trip to the Amazon rainforest. Obviously, I had a chance to document some pretty remarkable wildlife there, but now that I'm back in the US, I'll have a lot more time to devote to editing, and at least for the foreseeable future, new content will be coming to the channel, either in long form or short form, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. So be sure to check back then to catch my latest adventure. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.